Okay, so hopefully you've taken the survey and the options were, you know, the survey was what does Malsef mean by organisms and his definition of ecology. And the options I gave you were organisms are fine, maybe that's, he means exactly what he said, uh, he means species, or he means individuals, or maybe you didn't know, which was also cool. Again, the survey is really just so I can check in to understand what you're, what you're thinking. I'm going to suggest that he means individuals. And this is because ecological relationships are among individuals, right? An individual prey is eating an individual, uh, sorry, an individual pre predator is eating an individual prey, right? That's happening at the individual level. And these relationships occur between individuals. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to edit this definition. We're going to take out the word organisms. We're going to swap in the word individuals. Okay, so then what about the world relationship? What does he mean by relationship? Um, again, this isn't a very uh, useful word, right? Relationship can be used to describe how you talk to your parents. It can be used to describe how you interact with your peers. It can be, you know, we can talk about the position of this hand relative to this, in relationship to this hand. Um, so relationship can mean a lot of different things. What does he mean by relationship? I'm not going to make you do a survey. I'm going to suggest that this time he means interactions. Individuals interact with aspects of their surroundings, which can include other organisms, right? So we can now edit this a little bit more, that he means the study of interactions among individuals and all aspects of their surroundings. Okay, but what does he mean by all aspects of their surroundings? That's quite expansive, right? All aspects, but we might be a little bit more specific about what those aspects actually are. And I'm going to suggest that it's both the biotic and abiotic uh, environment. So if we, if we change this now, we can say that ecology is the study of interactions among individuals with each other and with the abiotic components of their environment. So that's how we're going to define ecology in this class. And so what I would suggest, right, we've just spent a fair bit of time uh, um, adjusting this definition. You might want to be able, if I give you a different definition and ask you to fix it, that might be something that you would want to be able to do. So think about the different parts that we changed in this definition and why we changed them. Right? I didn't just do this to be annoying. I did it to get you to think about what ecology is and what a definition actually is. So let's think about these different uh, interactions at different levels of organization. And so individual interactions, they have consequences at many uh, levels of organization, right? So if we come down here, right, uh, you've been getting lectures from Mike and Damon that have ranged from molecules through to cells and tissues, organs, and even up to the organism level. And notice that organisms is on here. Again, you might think about what, do, what does Gord mean by uh, organisms in this hierarchy? and up through populations, communities, ecosystems, and so on. So there's this, I like this picture here, right? So ecology scales from a bunch of different levels, um, from primarily the individual up to populations, communities, ecosystems, biomes, and the entire biosphere. You can find ecologists that think at all of these different levels, sometimes a little bit lower, but not that much lower than uh, the individual. Okay, so organisms, right? So I use the word organisms here intentionally. Ecology is about interactions and individuals do the interacting, right? And there's really only a couple different kinds of uh, biotic interactions that organisms can engage with. And we'll give these names later in the class, but it's this bee interacting with this plant. This plant is shading this second plant. This single beetle is chewing this single one plant, right? These are all individuals. This, this picture, these pictures have six individuals in them that are interacting in pair, pairs. So as we work our way up among uh, above organisms, populations are the next level of organization. And it's basically just all the individual organisms of a single species in a defined area. So for example, this is a tree species that I think is quite pretty from mostly in Canada, but you'll notice it's southernmost range is actually in the Indiana sand dunes. So it's not totally crazy to pick this species. This is jack pine, Pinus banksiana. And you can see that this is its range uh, through most of North America, including Indiana. So the population of jack pine is basically inside of this green area. You might be wondering where uh, do species fit into all of this, right? So species kind of go in the side of this hierarchy because species is a concept and there are actually quite a few different species concepts. 
So the definition we're going to use for this class is it's a set of individuals, there's that word individuals again, that are closely related by descent from a common ancestor and can reproduce with each other but not with other members of another species. For anyone keeping notes or maybe comparing among classes, this is the biological species concept. And the key to the biological species concept is this ability to uh, reproduce. Right, so here is an individual of jack pine. The entire population of jack pine is found within this green region. And Pinus banksiana is the species, and we define that uh, based on its ability to, in to interbreed successfully with other individuals that we also characterize as Pinus banksiana. Okay, so species are sort of off to the side over here. We have individuals, populations, and now communities. So communities are just groups of populations of multiple species that, that co-occur. So here is Pinus banksiana. We could take a look at three more uh, conifers, uh, white and black spruce, black spruce and white spruce, and I think this is tamarack, uh, a large species, right? These all potentially co-occur. Their populations are almost in the exact same regions. And here's a picture of what they look like growing together. Uh, this is black spruce, this is larch. I think there's a jack pine a little bit off to the right if I remember this site. And so what you're looking at here is a community, multiple populations from multiple species that are existing in the same time and, and place. If we move up from communities, we get to the level of ecosystems, and you should be detecting a pattern here that most of these are just sets of the previous, right? So ecosystems are essentially groups of communities and their physical environment. So here's a picture of an ecosystem. And, and what's key to an ecosystem and makes it different from the communities is that it includes the physical environment. So this river, all of the atmosphere, the rocks, the, the soil, that is all part of the ecosystem. And ecosystem scientists are tracking the sort of biogeochemical uh, interactions among uh, everything that's, that's out there. Okay, moving up, biomes, they're just groups of similar ecosystems. And you could think of the biome concept as somewhat similar to the uh, species concept in that we define biomes based on similar characteristics. And so here's just a, a, a picture from uh, your textbook. You can find it as uh, figure 27.3. Um, you don't need to know these, but but basically, you know, so the boreal forest ty or taiga plains is this pink part. And you can see that we have it uh, in North America, including in Indiana, but all across Northern Europe and Russia, we have uh, boreal forest as well, right? And you can also see that we have temperate forest in much of Indiana, as well as some grassland as well. Um, so these three types of biomes are just similar kinds of ecosystems that we that we give similar names. And the biosphere, we're not really going to cover in this class, but it's, it's you know, it's all the things. Um, if you want to work for NASA someday, you might be thinking about the biosphere um, and how all the things, the atmosphere, space radiation, all that stuff interact as a whole. So what I want to do is give you an example of different levels of... Um, or of interactions just with, with our friend Jack Pine here, right? So here's an individual tree of Jack Pine. We know that all of the individuals are somewhere inside of this green area, which includes a little bit of the Indiana sand dunes in the north of Indiana, um, and that's their population. Pinus banksiana is the species, and we've um, defined the species based on the fact that individuals that have features that we describe as Pinus banksiana can interbreed with one another but not with other kinds of things. Whoops. Jack pine grows in a community with other species. <clears throat> and so there's uh, larch in here and uh, black spruce and some mosses and some other things that forms the community of coexisting populations. And it only grows in one uh, biome, and that's taiga, uh, primarily in one biome, and that's taiga plains. And so the key then is that millions and millions of interactions among individuals and with the environment, they all add up and they all have consequences at a variety of scales. Um, and where and what you decide to measure is as ever going to depend on the question that you have. So I already gave you the definition of species, but it's worth thinking about where species fit into our definition of ecology. Right? So let's go back to that definition that we edited. Right? So this is what we came up with. Ecology is the study of interactions among individuals with each other and with the abiotic components of their environment. 
I'm going to suggest that we might want to put a caveat in here and say that individuals may be of the same or of different species. Right? It's important to recognize this, and, and this will become sort of more apparent, apparent later on, that these kinds of interactions actually have really different consequences if they are within or among species. And so I've got that underlined. So just to summarize, individuals are the things that interact in ecology, but these interactions can have different consequences depending on whether it's the same or a different species, right? And this should be intuitive. If they're the same species, then some of those interactions might be mating. They might be reproduction. They might be parental care. If they're a different species, based on our definition, it's never going to be those things. So there are certain kinds of interactions that are completely off limits if you're not of the same species and uh, compared to if you are the same species. And then hopefully, you know, it's become clear to you that ecology often deals with organization above the level of the individual. For the most part, I consider myself a population and community ecologist, occasionally dabbling in ecosystem ecology. Um, okay, so I'm going to suggest that based on those definitions, there is a single really central question that underpins almost everything in ecology. And that is, what controls the distribution and abundance of individuals? Right? And you could, you could ask this question in a lot of different ways, but underpinning all of these different forms of the question is this central question. Right? So we might ask, where do we find individuals? How many individuals do we find? What kinds of individuals do we find? You know, questions about species diversity. We might even ask, how many kinds? Right? Um, these are all different ways that you're really asking this, the same fundamental question. So as an example, I want you to think about uh, the scientific method. So remember, the scientific method often starts with an observation that leads to a question. You have to make a hypothesis in order to know what to do next that implies a prediction, and then we can get some data, do an experiment, do something, and we either confirm our hypothesis or we reject our hypothesis, and we have to try again. So here's our observation. This is where all of the jack pine in the entire world is, somewhere inside of this green area. What determines the distribution of jack pine? And so I'd actually like you to take a second. We're going to stop the video here. Uh, and there's going to be another survey at the bottom. What I want you to do now is just rank these. Um, uh, I'm going to give you a couple different options. Rank what you think is the most important in controlling the distribution of jack pine. And then we're going to pick us up with the third part of uh, lecture one.